Good morning, guys. It is a gloomy Sunday morning here. Uh, kind of early. Wanted to get out here before the cloud cover burned off because there's better lighting. And I'm going to take you around to the garden and show you a few things. Um, so the title of this video, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't seem like an exaggeration. And I don't know if this is where you are right now in the gardening timeline, but right around the middle of August to mid-September, I just completely burn out. And it's most likely, I did a video on this last year and kind of had an epiphany in that video that the reason I burn out at this time of year is because we don't have a downtime. Here in Southern California, we can garden pretty much year round, which sounds like a blessing, and it is, I'm not complaining. If you consider the fact that I've been gardening nonstop since October, of last year, and here we are almost in September, it, you get tired. You do. I don't care who you are. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and you, you just lose it <laughs> about this time. And so, and especially in conjunction with the heat wave that we've had, and usually have at this time of year. We had above 90 temperatures um, for a week and a half. We're finally out of that. And I know that doesn't sound hot to some of you. I understand that. I am spoiled, you know, but everything's relative. And so my 90 degree heat wave might be your 110 degree heat wave or more. So anyway, the last week and a half, like I said, I have not wanted to be out in the garden almost at all. A little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening, but even then, you know, things have been busy. And so my garden was neglected and I wanted to put this out there because I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat and you might be chalking it up to the fact that you are a beginner and you just aren't cut out for this. Well, I'm no beginner and sometimes I feel like I'm just not cut out for this, but it passes, you know, and I, I, in fact, if you are a beginner, I know we have a lot of first time gardeners on here this year. And so please let me know down in the comments, if you're a first time gardener, um, or if you're not, if you get this as well, but especially if you're a first time gardener and you, I want to know if you're, if you've had a great time, if you've had success failures this year. And I want to know if you plan on doing this again, either right now for fall gardening or especially, you know, this coming spring, if you know, if sands or butts, you've caught the bug and you are going to continue. I want to know that. And I hope that's the case because even though there's times like this where you just are done and you just want to have a break, gardening truly is, <clears throat> in my opinion, it's a lifesaver. I mean, it's, I've had videos, I've done videos on this, you know, it's, it's just a, a support in bad times. It's a support in, with mental struggles, physical struggles. It, it, it keeps you on task and, and doing something and your mind off of all the craziness out there or things that might be going on in your life. And so for me, you know, I'll do this until the day I physically can't do it anymore, even through times like this. But I did take a bit of a break this last week with the heat, week and a half, and my garden unfortunately suffered. It's not the best time to take a break is in hot weather. In hot weather, plants uh, get stressed and they're a lot easier to, you know, take on or be victim to pests and disease. And I definitely, this last week and a half, these spider mites took out one complete TP of beans and half of another one. Um, white fly was everywhere. And yesterday was the really the first decent day to be outside working. And so I got out here and I cleaned it up and you know, I had piles of dead trimmings laying all over the place that I just hadn't picked up because I trimmed, it got hot, I went inside. The lawn hadn't been mowed for two weeks, and so yesterday was kind of a big cleanup day. Uh, so I will take you around and kind of show you what has not been going so well, just in case you guys are in that boat. Um, I don't want to hide the fact that I have problems and troubles in the garden as well, because I don't think that's fair. I originally wanted to do that, you know, a couple of years ago, because I wanted... Uh, people who hadn't had those problems to not be starting out and then all of a sudden 
seeing a video of mine and thinking, oh, this is too much trouble. I'm not even going to get started. The problem is so many do get started and have these problems and think it's because they're a newbie and, you know, they're just, this isn't their thing. They don't have a green thumb. You do have a green thumb. A green thumb is called perseverance, learning from mistakes, and continuing on. That's all a green thumb is. So, uh, I want to take you around and just show you a couple of things that I uh, am experimenting with because I did have a problem, like I said, with some of my beans, uh, spider mites and things. And, and there's a couple of things I'm doing that I've never done before. Let me know once you see them, if you've done them, and if it worked for you or not. So let's head over to the vegetable garden and I'm just going to give you a, a kind of point of view um, tour of some things that are not working and I fixed or just left and I'm ready to plant for fall. How about you guys? <laughs> Let's go. So I'm not gonna complain about the pepper bed. It's doing pretty well. I did have some sun scald because it was just so hot. It didn't matter what I put up for them. And like I said, I didn't because I was inside trying to stay cool. But look at these sweetie drop peppers. There are more peppers on here than there are leaves. Are you seeing this? It's crazy all over them. Now this bed, um, the squash, I've had some problems with them, you know, not tying them, not continuing to tie them up and them getting top heavy and breaking over. So I had quite a few yellow squash in here that are no longer. I did plant some new seeds a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. The heat has kind of attacked them, but they're, they're doing okay. And then I also planted some bush beans. Uh, a couple weeks ago. They're doing great. The heat didn't seem to bother them much at all. I'm gonna get a wide shot here and see if you miss anything. Is anything missing? I had a TP right over there of beans. So I had three bean TPs. So I took that one out. I actually like that it's opened up the scene here. And then I had my watermelon growing on a TP right here. And I took that one out as well when I harvested the last watermelon. I took these beans right down to the ground because these are scarlet runners and I've been told many times that they are perennial and I've never grown them that way. So I just cut them back. They, they were covered in spider mites and I wanna see if they grow back. I might put just a temporary smaller TP here if they do. And then my Blauhildi beans, which I have loved, they were covered in uh, the top parts. The top was covered in spider mite. And so I cut all that off. And because I had trimmed them up a couple weeks ago, they started to put out new growth at the bottom. So that did, that wasn't really touched so bad. This one especially, lots of new growth from when I cut it back a few weeks ago. I did that on camera and um, it was putting out a bunch of new growth. The top though was covered in uh, spider mites and white fly. And so I just cut the tops off and I'm gonna let them grow down here because there was some buds and see if we can't just get it to grow back in the next month or so. The okra has been really producing well this year. Um, well, this is my first year growing okra, so I don't know any different, but I've gotten quite a bit of okra out of it. And then the loofah, my, my favorite loofah, it's still doing wonderfully. Lots of fruit, these big ones. And it's going crazy too. Look, it's going across the, the lights. It's going across the lights this way over the path on the fence and then back up these lights here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the chickens lately. Look at these two big, beautiful white ones. Those are those little babies that I showed you. I did harvest my birdhouse gourds and got that plant out of there. You know, I have not loved that plant. The birdhouse gourds are cool and you can see they're getting, um, they're drying up. So we'll be able to, do what we want to do with them pretty soon. This was a volunteer loofah that came up from last year and it's, uh, it's producing. I won't need this many loofah, but they're fun. Mostly flowers in here now. Like I said, I took out the watermelon right here. Now these are the San Marzano cuttings that I took a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. I'm um, not sure, but they're doing really well. They're already 
what, almost a foot and a half, two feet tall. And this is the three sisters bed. Um, we had some corn on the cob a couple nights ago, which was pretty good. And I've gotten a lot of beans, but I still just do not like this way of planting because look what happens. This corn stalk got broken over because of the weight of the beans on it. It just completely snapped the entire stalk. Um, this one too. And it's just, a, it just looks messy. It just, it's hard to find the beans. I was trying to harvest some of the corn and I, I had to break the, the bean stalk to do it. And so that killed the top of the beans. So I won't be doing that again. It was a fun little experiment, but that's, that's it. Here's some pumpkins, little miniature pumpkins. And there's a new vine that's uh, got bigger pumpkins on it that's coming out here. One of the issues that I've had this year has been a, a job that I wasn't able to do in the beginning of the year, which I normally do. Every spring and fall, I top up the beds with a mixture of some kind of potting soil and homemade compost. And the problem this year is when I was going to be doing that, I was going through a lot of medical issues. And if you guys have been with me since then, you know. Um, and so I just didn't have the, the stamina and whatever to get out here and do that. And so when I planted everything, I just kind of mixed a little bit of compost in with it, which is still good. But if you can see, these beds are so low. They're about three inches, maybe four, too low in terms of the soil depth which means in these beds that generally have about 14 inches of soil, they might just have about 10. And that's okay, but it's not good, especially when it's not new, refreshed uh, soil full of brand new nutrients. And so um, I have some work to do this fall to get these ready, but that's one of the reasons I don't have the lush growth that I did in previous years. So I hope me putting this out there just let you know that if you're having some problems with pests, disease, stamina, and uh, motivation and inspiration, you're not alone. And if this is your first year gardening, keep it up, please. Don't quit because you're frustrated or disappointed. <sighs> gardening is such a worthwhile hobby that I would hate to see first year gardeners quit because of those things. It just, it's not worth it. Stick with it another year. Take a break if you need to. It's okay. Take the winter off. Take the fall off. It's okay. Meet me back here in spring and you'll be rejuvenated and ready to get started. Um, but keep an eye on things because I will be putting out there, you know, when seed catalogs come out, you know, you guys really need to take advantage of seeds as soon as, as things are available, as new stocks are put out there. And I will be letting you know anytime I hear of that happening because it may sell out again, just like it did this year, all the companies. And you want to make sure that you have the seeds you need and want uh, before there's a mad rush on the market. So thanks for watching. Um, leave me a message down below again if this is your first year gardening or if you're a seasoned gardener but still get burnout. I'd like to hear that. So I'm not the only one. I'll see you guys later.